assalamu alaikum to all the distinguished leaders out here i have to say gori jaa saab agar aap na aate to hum yahan na aate and also chinoy saab who i have known for some years and he is an inspirational leader when it comes to public life and social activities but gori jaa saab stands out in my life as my colleague across the finance ministry to the commerce side he stood out in the cabinet as somebody who was friend of friends but also as somebody who could say whatever is required to be said and you know th this is not an easy thing so one thing in common between him and me is that we speak the truth and nothing but the truth <laughs> and and we do so for a change in the economy so minister saab thank you for bringing me to noy saab thank you for being inspirational leader in stock exchange and other uh, domains where i work i think <clears throat> i could talk about a number of things but because this is an educational institution i'd like to tell you few things which may stand out for you to build your careers and one of the things is that i have been associated and made a lifetime member of pakistan institute of corporate governance since for the last 30 40 years and that happened when i came to pakistan and because i was bringing this international knowledge of pakistan institute of the in corporate governance that i was able to learn about pakistan's pakistan uh, corporate governance framework we just had a major summit in 2024 december so if you just look at the newspapers and flip the google you will be able to see the power of this particular summit that we brought in i have to say that if time permits i'd like to bring this knowledge to this platform with the support of of course chinoy saab and uh, other colleagues here including because i have to say there is a cost associated with it because and and we can subsidize it for institutions it's actually involves bringing in experts but my time will come free to this uh, outfit second i have to say there was an there's another very important moment in my life when minister of planning one day called me in my office which is ikbal saab who's actually the current minister and he said shamshad can you send me your cv i have decided to honor you with nishan e imtiaz and i have to say i never thought pakistan will give me an award because i've always lived abroad and planning minister said i want a short succinct and i have to say getting an award from pakistan is different from the international awards that i have gotten in finance and whatever areas so i wanted to share this good news how a country's perspective to me is important i have to say that i have to pay a tribute on so many things to minister commerce and one of them is his fight for rescheduling the chinese ipp debts and it's like fighting <laughs> something which is very difficult to achieve there are lots of ministers who don't agree with him i'm the probably only one standing by him i was talking to the minister uh, of energy petroleum energy they have a different school of thought i happen to be with guhar guhar ijaz saab from day one because ipps is something we invested in during our times when we were fostering a relationship with china i happen to be one of the international global advisors of china so for me it is not easy to make a point regarding china's investments in pakistan by but i stood with you minister saab and i have 
I have talked during my global advisory meetings internationally, which happen in China every year. I have been always invited by the foreign minister and the economic ministers. I have made the point in a corner with them. I think they understand our dilemma and they are going to be addressing and supporting us if our government gets its head right. And for that, we have Gohari Jassa. So IPP's debt, the China-Pakistan is now entering into the second phase of China-Pakistan corridor, which is got to kickstart the second phase of this corridor. There's a huge amount of investment by China on different initiatives. I don't have time to talk about each of them. And I think it is pretty far reaching for this country. And now they are entering into a second phase. Pakistan now needs foreign funds of almost over 3 billion plus 7 billion of IMF program under the extended fund facility which you must have read, which is really an investment we need to make to get this country moving. Extended fund facility is something you as student need to know because Pakistan has borrowed for several years IMF programs and we are now con counting at least some of the politicians think that this may be the last one but I have been hearing that for 30, 40 years and it isn't the last one and some of us know how painful this is because it comes loaded with conditionality. Now, the IPP's debt with its extended tenor of five years really extends from 2036 to 2041. Even if you don't remember these numbers, you can find them very easily. And if you need, I'll be happy to come back to the school to give you the whole history and framework for it. Because as students, you know how to, you should know how to avoid this for future. Repayment of Chinese IPPs, which Gohar Jaz is single-handedly fighting, is at 15.4 billion till 2036. And if you dissect it, it is almost 2 billion every year in 2025, 20, and it goes down steadily. So amongst the several things on which I'm analytically working from the student's point of view, the borrowing burden of Pakistan, the track of lack of effective implementation, and the issues surrounding when we sit in the government corridors with Commerce Minister and I as Economic Minister coordinating what we call ECC. It's an instrument and an uh, and a framework that you need to say. It's an economic coordination committee. And I'll come back to explain to you these frameworks. This economic coordination committee is the most powerful decision-making authority in the government. 